Hi, everyone. My name is Bowen. I'm from Purdue University. Uh, I'm in my second year of forestry. Um, today, I'm very glad to talk about my research progress, which is using remote sensing data to estimate forest carbon stocking under uh, different silvicultural systems. Uh, next slide, please. As, as you might know that uh, in recent years, there is a higher frequency of uh, natural disasters uh, as a result of climate change. And there is um, excessive amount of CO2 in the atmosphere that is accelerating this process. Uh, forest, uh, however, plays an important role in carbon sequestration uh, through photosynthesis. And therefore, it would be good to know uh, how much uh, carbon can be stored within a forest. Uh, next slide, please. There are many ways to detect carbon storage. Um, for example, uh, one traditional field measurement, um, you can think of uh, destructive sampling, um, which is go out into the field, uh, cut down a tree and dry it and weigh the mass. And uh, that way you will get um, the biomass for that uh, particular tree. Uh, but this is rather time consuming and uh, it's not practical on a very large scale. A remote sensing data, um, is much faster and it can have very large aerial coverage uh, depending on your research interest uh, and the resolution of the images available. Next slide, please. And I would also want to know that uh, how would different silvicultural systems uh, can influence the carbon storage over time? Um, so uh, the image here shows a clear cut um, region. And that is one type of even aged management, which creates a forest of uh, even aged groups. And we also have uneven aged man management, uh, like shelter wood method, um, which creates uh, forests of different age groups, um, and also uh, control, which is um, no management. Next, next slide, please. So this is my, um, I'm gonna introduce my current progress. This is an ongoing research. So the objectives for today's presentation is I will first demonstrate using canopy height model to model uh, carbon change um, and then compare the difference of carbon storage by uh, different uh, management methods uh, like even aged, uh, uneven aged versus control. Next slide, please. So my study belongs to a broader um, to a broader study that is called Hardwood Ecosystem Experiment, which studies forest responses to uh, different forest management activities uh, in Indiana. Uh, specifically, my study sites are Morgan Monroe State Forest and uh, Yellowwood State Forest, which are located um, in South Central Indiana, as uh, indicated by blue on the image right here. Next slide, please. Within these two state forests, um, there are different uh, management units. Uh, each unit will have uh, one of the three uh, management. Uh, it's either control or uneven aged management, which includes a patch cut and a single tree selection. Um, even aged management like uh, clear cut and uh, sheltered wood. So if you look at the map on the right side here, uh, control is represented by uh, green, uh, uneven aged represented by pink, and uh, the even aged uh, by uh, orange. So there are nine management units in total, um, three, uh, three units uh, for each type of management. All harvest was, was primarily done in 2008 um, with shelter wood itself uh, having a second cut in 2015. Uh, to 2016. Um, next slide, please. So, so when the data was, uh, so, sorry, so the ground data um, belongs to this broader project. Uh, specifically, it, it, this data, uh, ground data belongs to Professor Michael Saunders. Um, and the data collection time, the initial, uh, the initial one uh, started in 2008, which was right after the harvest. 
And then it was repeated on a four year cycle. So 2013, 2017, and the most recent one is the 2021 data. Um, in this presentation, I'll primarily use the DBH uh, of trees to uh, calculate the above ground biomass. Next slide, please. So within each management unit, um, there are about uh, 75 to 80 sampling plots that were uh, systematically distributed throughout the unit. Uh, each uh, management unit is about uh, 90 hectares. And for the plot itself, it, it is one fourth of an acre uh, with a plot radius at uh, 58.5 feet. And the horizontal distance between plot is uh, 75 meters, whereas the vertical distance is 150 meters. Next slide, please. And the first thing I do is, um, is to determine the reference above ground biomass. So I will calculate biomass first, and then eventually I can convert that into carbon. Um, I chose a Shauner Keys article uh, from 2014, um, which, can, uh, which contains a set of allometric equations. So uh, the natural log of biomass um, is a function of the DBH for a sp uh, specific tree. And the parameters uh, B0, B1 actually vary by species grouping, like species or genus, and also uh, wood specific uh, gravity. So if you look at the image right here, um, there are different um, families of trees uh, with different uh, wood specific gravity. And based on that, um, relationship between uh, DBH and biomass uh, will vary. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. I took a screenshot of this study. Uh, as you can see on the left side here, uh, we have um, Aceraceae, um, which has two categories, um, the species uh, specific uh, wood gravity uh, less than 0.5 and greater than 5, uh, 0.5. And depending on uh, species, and uh, in some cases genus, you will have different um, parameters and also uh, DBH range might uh, vary a little bit. Next slide, please. And the reason I chose this uh, is it's a, it's a national scale uh, above ground biomass regression equations. And I tried to find uh, most recent um, biomass equations specifically for Indiana region, but, but I had a hard time finding it. And another reason is uh, this equation only needs DBH to calculate biomass. I, I have seen some studies using the combination of uh, DBH and height, um, but uh, uh, from the ground data that we have right now, only, um, for example, only 6,000 out of uh, 30,000 trees uh, have field measure height. Um, so, so it would be it would be more convenient to just use the DBH itself to calculate biomass. And also, this article is an updated version um, of uh, another uh, study, which uh, the earlier version was used uh, in the similar study area. Um, particularly Yellowwood State Forest. This is one of our um, uh, study sites that we would use as well. Um, next slide, please. So when I had the uh, gr ground data, the very first thing I did was I removed the dead trees and very uh, young seedlings because our equations actually have <clears throat> DBH uh, range. Um, and then I calculated biomass for each tree based on uh, the, the equation parameters. I did this in our studio. And then I summarized the total biomass of the trees uh, within plot. Then I got a total biomass, I mean, plot level, um, total above ground biomass values. Next slide, please. In addition to calculating uh, the reference biomass that I just mentioned, I also calculated the trees per acre basal area um, and other parameters like quadratic mean diameter and dominant species, uh, just in case I would use it uh, in the future. Next slide, please. Then I obtained um, canopy height model uh, from, from this server, this link over here. Um, the canopy height model is derived from uh, the LiDAR data, which is the difference between the digital surface model, 
digital service model and the digital elevation model. Um, it has a resolution of five feet. And uh, the year uh, that the data is available is 2011 and 2018. So if uh, here's a screenshot of the uh, canopy height model of, um, of the one, one of the management unit in Morgan Monroe State Forest. So basically, um, trees with greater height are represented by um, brighter colors. And in the center area um, is a harvest region, um, which I just mentioned, uh, it was harvested in 2008. Uh, this image itself uh, was shot in 2018. And I also obtained uh, the canopy high model from another source, uh, which is uh, drone. But since drone only provides uh, the DSM data, I have to resemble it um, to the same resolution uh, as the DEM one. And that gives me a resolution of uh, 76 centimeters. And uh, that data was collected in year 2021. Next slide, please. In addition to the canopy height model, I also use the digital elevation model to uh, derive the uh, slope in degrees. So uh, as you can see here, um, the color of darker blue represents a steeper slope. Uh, next slide, please. Um, now I'm ready to uh, build a general linear model, which is based on a plot level analysis. Next, please. So my, my plan uh, here is to first uh, just use canopy height model um, to perform a univariate regression and see how much uh, uh, see uh, how much explanation it can perform, and uh, following by uh, adding slope. And in future work, I plan to add in other variables like uh, lidar derived uh, metrics, um, spectral indices like NDVI, and other spatial features like texture. Next slide, please. So when I plot the, the mean canopy height, mod, uh, canopy height uh, versus the biomass, um, I checked the assumptions of the GLM and I found uh, the homocidacity is, uh, is not uh, satisfied for, for this. So I performed data transformation. I, I performed log transformation and square root transformation uh, for both uh, biomass and the canopy height uh, values. Next slide, please. Um, I think there, there is a, there, there are images. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, might be loading issues. So what I found was uh, transformed data are more skewed uh, than raw data and also uh, the transformed values uh, have higher kurtosis. So if we, uh, next slide, please. So if we use the transformed data, which is uh, presented on the right side, uh, it looks like the, um, the heterosidacity is even worse uh, compared with the one before transformation. So uh, in this case, I decided to keep the, uh, using the original one. Uh, next slide, please. And then I performed uh, Pearson's correlation of uh, canopy height versus uh, the biomass. Uh, it looks like uh, the canopy height values have a rather high correlation with the biomass with an uh, R equals to 0 0.68. And to visualize that, I, I put plots on top of uh, the background, the canopy height. So as you can see here, especially on the top of the graph, um, Plots with higher biomass values are represented by uh, darker green. And for canopy height, um, pixels with greater height values are those brighter um, pixels. So it, it looks like there's a letter, uh, um, there are a set of pixels that look like um, letter A uh, with very bright colors. Um, and on top of these uh, pixels with a very, great uh, canopy height, um, it, it's very close to the plots uh, that also have high biomass values. 
Um, next slide, please. And following that, I I used a uh, I used a validation set approach. I used a data set from Morgan Monroe State Forest as my training set. Um, I got an R square value at forty six percent with uh, a root mean square error at uh, eight point seven three tons per hectare. Um, and then next slide, please. Um, I performed validation on um, the data set in Yellowwood State Forest. And that gave me an R square of 59% uh, um, with, with an uh, RMSE at uh, 8.02 tons per hectare. Um, it's only 59%, it's, so it's probably worth to um, adding in more variables and see how this will change. Next slide, please. So, I also plotted the um, Pearson's correlation for slope versus biomass. Um, so just for slope itself, uh, it seems the relationship is uh, insignificant. So for univariate regression, uh, I, I'll, I'll stop here. Next slide, please. And the next question that I have is, I want to know how would the model performance change if uh, I split the plots by treatment. So in the previous example, uh, the plots um, the plots were the plots that were used are from all management units. So all of them together. Uh, next, I will try um, splitting the plots uh, by treatment. Uh, so control even aged versus uneven aged. Next slide, please. So let's first look at plots of control. Uh, which is represented uh, on the left. Um, the the homocidacity issue uh, it, it looks looks much better than the uh, origin. I mean the global model, which has uh, all plots. Um, next slide, please. Looking at uneven age plots, it, it still uh, looks much better than uh, than original one. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, for the even age units, it looks okay, uh, except that there are a few plots um, on the top right corner that actually caused that um, tilt. Uh, but but otherwise, uh, I think it, it looks a little bit better than the uh, original one. Next slide, please. So I performed the Pierce correlation um, of canopy high model versus uh, the biomass again. And uh, actually, uh, I found that plots within uneven aged management and even aged management, uh, which are represented by the, the middle figure and the figure on the right, have a much higher um, correlation than plots of control, uh, which is represented on the left. So it looks like um, it looks like plots of control do not have that tail of points that are close to the origin. Um, but uh, for plots of uneven aged uh, and even aged management, uh, they have a few plots that are uh, close to the origin. Uh, this, I think this makes sense because uh, for plots that are within control, there is no current management at that time. Um, um, so, so there is not much uh, variation there's not much uh, variation in terms of uh, the canopy height, um, uh, unlike unlike the plots within within harvest region, which which have very low biomass values and also low canopy height values. Uh, next slide, please. And I found this similar pattern uh, when I uh, cross validated this on Yellowwood State Forest. Um, so. So for the three images on the on the top, which which um, includes the global model, all plots versus plots of uh, even aged uh, management and uneven aged management, they all have an R square, uh, which is much higher than uh, plots of control. Plots of control only has an R square value at twenty four percent, and uh, um, for for the three figures on the top, I think um, they have. They have plots that are close to zero because these are the plots that were 
uh, actually harvested in the year 2008. And that actually acts act as a tail for this distribution, which, uh, which eventually uh, results in a higher R square values uh, compared with uh, plots of control. Next slide, please. So if we, if we are to visualize these plots that were harvested, uh, so the image on the left is using the canopy height model as the background. Um, these plots, these three plots were exactly on uh, the area of harvest. And if we look at the RGB image on the right, we can still tell that uh, uh, visually these, uh, the regrowth of these trees uh, are much, much shorter than, than the trees uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, next slide, please. And repeating this procedure, I performed um, I performed in a similar manner for not only the 2017 field data, uh, but also the 2013 data plus the 2021 data. And uh, um, I found that uh, in most cases, the canopy height uh, is uh, ha has has a very a strong correlation with the uh, biomass, except for uh, the control unit in 2021 and uh, uh, the even the uneven aged uh, unit um, in 2013. I think one reason is, um, like like I mentioned, uh, for plots of control, they do not have that uh, much variation in terms of height, so that cannot be reflected um, in the biomass variation. Uh, next slide, please. And still, when I perform data transformation, uh, raw data looks better than, um, than the transformed ones. Next slide, please. Um, some st studies suggest using a quadratic mean height um, gives a better performance than the mean canopy height values. Um, because the quadratic mean height actually assigns more weight to the pixels with greater height values. But when I calculated that and compare that with the mean canopy height values, I found the pattern to be very similar and they, they also have a very similar um, correlation to the biomass. So in this case, I will keep using the, the mean canopy height values. Next slide, please. So, so later on, I added in slope and I compared with, uh, with just using CHM itself. I found the performance is very similar, pretty much no difference. Next slide, please. And uh, when I check, the no, uh, there's no multicollinearity issue between the CHM and slope. There's a very uh, weak correlation. So we're good on this part. Next slide, please. When I validated this on um, Yellowwood State Forest, it gives me a pretty much uh, the same or very similar result in terms of R square values and uh, root mean square um, error. So I probably need to introduce new variable. Next slide, please. So that's what I'm currently at. Uh, in the future, I plan to add in other LiDAR metrics. Um, like horizontal structure, uh, for example, canopy cover, uh, vertical structure like the percentile heights. I also uh, consider adding in uh, spectral features like NDVI and uh, uh, spatial features like uh, the texture. But the challenges that I will have is uh, one is the uh, image collection time that is available. The other one is to deal with the shadow issues. Um, in the future, I would also want to compare uh, the GLM model with uh, non-parametric algorithms and see how how they will uh, how each uh, would be different than the other one. Next slide, please. That's it. Thank you.